I'm, I'm completely buttered up by whatever the heck we just saw there. So IBM has released the Granite 4 family of models, and it may come as a surprise to some that IBM actually has a family of open source and Apache 2.0 licensed language models, but they in fact do, and they're called the Granite family, which has recently been updated to Granite 4. So interesting things to note, first and foremost, these do have the same release date as me, so um, you know, that's just cool. We were both released on October 2nd, different years though. And second to that, I actually tried making this video a few days ago. And truthfully, I just kind of forgot how to test smaller and non-state of the art models. So I got angry and deleted all the footage, but we're back at it today. And we're going to go ahead and just take a quick peek at some of these models. They did release four different ones. Well, technically three, but the last two are kind of similar, but kind of different. And there are a few things of interest to note here, but we're basically going to just gloss over some of this interesting release article and then run some fun tests across the Granite 4 family of models. A few key things to note. First and foremost, as I'd mentioned, these are Apache 2.0 licensed, which is always very nice to see. But beyond that, and perhaps more of a technically interesting thing, these models are hybrid Mamba transformer architecture, and they mention this right here. Now, if you scroll down, there is more verbose information about what that specifically means, as well as a couple of hyperlinked things, one being the paper that actually kind of references some of that architecture in technical detail, and another as just a kind of read me from IBM about what exactly the Mamba hybrid is. So basically, if we clicked on this right here, it would go ahead and just give us a nice little article here from IBM. But I think in the interest of keeping my introductions a bit shorter than normal, we can just say that the Mamba models are able to handle much longer context without massively growing the amount of GPU RAM that's necessary to actually handle longer context sequences. That is a very, very oversimplification of the technical intricacies that kind of go in line with the architecture, but I suppose for a first test video, it is good enough. So moving on, we have the different sizes of models that were released here in this family, starting with, and it is kind of funny because this is the largest one that has been currently released, but it is designated as Granite 4.0 small. So it's a hybrid MOE with 32 billion total parameters and 9 billion active, followed by Tiny, a hybrid MOE with 7 billion total and 1 billion active, followed by Micro, a dense model with 3 billion. And there is also Micro here, but you'll notice that it is lacking the H designation in its name, which just means this is not a hybrid, and they kind of touch upon that here. It has a conventional attention-driven transformer architecture to accommodate platforms and communities that do not yet support hybrid architecture. And they actually say that all of the models have been trained on data samples up to 512k tokens in context length, and performance has been validated up to 128k. So it's just kind of interesting to see, and these models do seem quite neat. And with that, I do actually have every single one of these downloaded here in LM Studio, which we can see. Well, okay, so I do have them all, but the micro, I'm using the non-hybrid micro because I figure we can just try to like use one non-hybrid but aside from that we have the largest which is small which i did download in f16 we have tiny which is the 7 billion parameter moe with 1 billion active which i got in q8 and finally the granite 4.0 micro which is in f16 now for the system i'm using right here this is the ryzen 395 ai max system uh, i like to refer to this as my beta testing machine because i feel like a beta tester who purchased a device that was perhaps advertised as being a little more ready for production than some um, hype reviewers would have led us to believe. But with that, we can now go ahead and see that we have the tiniest of the models in loaded here. And let's just go ahead and get a feel for it and talk to it. Hey, little guy. Oh, geez. Okay, so <laughs> I had seen reports of folks, someone basically screenshotted this and was like, does any, is this model broken? Did anyone else see this sort of response from an IBM model where it's almost kind of role-playing? So I wrote, hey, little guy, and it says, looks up at you with a friendly smile. Hey there, how are you doing today? All right, well, you want to role-play? We're going to role-play. Sorry, I'm in a bit of a mood right now, but that's probably okay. Interesting, it didn't just immediately shut that down. Some folks were saying if you kind of like mess with the system prompts in these models, they may be a little more inclined to actually be fun. Okay, so we can just kind of maybe move into a new chat here and let's try something realistic with it. So uh, keeping in mind, this is a 3 billion parameter dense model. I'm going to ask it for a very simple Python game. Okay, 
always, always the small models do a guess the number game. 67. I'm very good at this. <clears throat> Too high, guess again. Uh, 55. <laughs> All right, I guess the number in eight guesses doesn't really feel like something to congratulate one on. But overall, it did produce a game that actually gave me some level of entertainment. Certainly. Oh, okay, so it, it's giving, it's still giving us a guess the number game, but it's just going to add some graphical feedback to this. Unfortunately, we did get an error here, and that's okay. I'm not going to kind of make it, try to fix it. But, you know, it did do one successful game. Now, I would like to do one static prompt throughout the testing of all three of these different sizes of models, so I suppose for that we will do a Steve's PC Repair HTML website. All right, so let's check out our Steve's website from the micro variant of Granite 4. Okay, you know, this is probably what you would expect from a very tiny model. It did give us a fake customer testimonial from John D. Computer was running slow, but after bringing it here, it's like new again. All right, yeah, not bad. We only charged him four grand and gave him a thread ripper. Uh, I'd say overall, you know, it's static, but it does have a footer. Everything's cleanly organized. Nothing is egregious here. This is overall part of the course for what one would expect, perhaps. All right, so now we're going to load in the Granite 4 H Tiny, which of course is the hybrid MOE model with 7 billion total and 1 billion active. I'll just put this to some, we'll just do 32768. We won't need more than that. And keep in mind, this is the only one here that I have that is a Q8. And truthfully, I don't think I saw an F16 for this from within the LM Studio interface to actually find the model. So that's why this is a Q8, but um, that may be just some incompetence on my part. Regardless, let's just do, hey, little guy. Oh, okay. So this one is, <laughs> you can just call me Hermes if you'd like. <laughs> That was, I just didn't expect that. It didn't immediately jump into role play like its smaller sibling did, so I'm not quite sure what to make of that. I am also noticing this is running much faster, which I guess would make some sense. Uh, we can ignore that. Let's look at VRAM requirements. Okay, so this is currently using around eight and a half gigabytes of video RAM, so not bad at all. So this could be a relatively decent option depending on its performance and one's specific use case. All right, this one definitely seems more mm, business focused. I didn't even, I, I purposely omitted simple but functional from the prompt here, and it's still just going to give us a number guessing game. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just not even going to play that. I'm going to jump straight into asking it to make something with a graphics feature to it. I misspelled graphics, but that's okay. Oh, okay, so it's opting to use Turtle here, whereas the smaller one was going to use Pygame. I'll say something I've noticed about the granite models and playing with them a little and obviously prior to filming this video, when they go ahead and generate a script or something, they kind of almost explain it in a manner aligned with what you would expect to see in code comments within the script. So that's just very interesting to see is they seem to want to do a very thorough job of explaining what they've actually done. And that is just a surface level observation. I'm, I'm completely buttered up by whatever the heck we just saw there. That was beautiful. No, seriously though, that was actually 52. I was going to say 53. I, I can, too high, try again. <laughs> I don't, is this, is this some like style that I am not familiar with? Too low. Okay, so 47. I'm a hell bent on getting the right number now because I want to see what it does. It, it will probably just say, like, you got it, but okay. This was actually significantly better than I thought it would. Oh, okay. So I was asking it, could you please tell me a little more about the beautiful line graphics we saw? It's now just giving me the actual snippet of the code that's responsible for doing that. I want to know more about this. I want to know, like, behind the artists, like, what exactly... 
All right, then it just went boring. It was just like default. That was really, though, I did not expect that. I think it did a nice job to the point where I do believe it is prudent to actually ask this for a retro style Python game. All right, it's going to try. <laughs> I'm definitely more entertained by these models than perhaps a normal human would be. I don't know if that's a net negative or not. Game over. <laughs> and then it keeps going. <laughs> All right. Well, so it seems the purpose of this is simply to avoid the falling obstacles, which I wonder if they get iteratively, iteratively more um, aggressive if I manage to avoid them. No, that doesn't seem to be the case, but it did go ahead and do something functional, which is obviously first and foremost the most important thing we check to see. So, so now for the comparison prompt, we're just going to ask it for the beautiful HTML website in a single script based on what we saw with some of the actual, well, basically just the graphical number guessing game. I'm a little more excited to see this result. I do believe my high hopes have been somewhat dashed seeing how short this script is. I do believe we're going to see something akin to the 3 billion parameter result, but regardless, let's try it. All right, so here, oh, hmm. Well, that is significantly worse than the, well, this is difficult to quantify because if I were to kind of go out, okay, so the footer and the actual header are properly sized and aligned to the actual size of the page as opposed to this, where the footer ended probably like three, 400 pixels too soon. However, this is not like, you know, it's probably going a little too far to really analyze these results, but the actual content's not centered here, it is here. And, you know, I just, it almost actually seems like this is a slight off white and then this one is just blatantly white. So, and it is because it, it even, I think this one was better. I think the 3 billion was better. I'm going to tell it that and see what it does. So I told it the 3 billion parameter model did better. I told it it's a 486 billion parameter model and that it can make this website really amazing. I know it can. So I tried nagging it. Okay, I'm already seeing the background image, the unsplash here. Interesting. So I wonder if lying about its capabilities could actually somewhat assist it. It's like in Harry Potter when he pretends to give Ron the liquid lock and Ron performs better just because he thought he had it. So interesting. Oh, well... I think it may have just gone ahead and added a background image here, but <laughs> I'll take it. All right, let's, ah. Uh, all right, so the <laughs> the background image didn't load, but it tried and I'll take it. So, you know, interesting to see sometimes how behavior can change depending on prompt uh, for both models and humans. All right, I think, I think basically we're just going to go ahead now and load in the largest of the Granite family, at least for the time being. There was mentions in that release post, I think about like a medium or... Yes, okay, so they are going to have medium as well, and I should have said they're also going to have thinking models that come out. They did mention that in this article here. I just neglected to mention that, so I'll do it now. So finally, let's go ahead and take a peek at the Granite 4H small, which is the largest of the models here. We can see this is... F16, well, we can't see it right there, but it is. And this is actually going to use a significantly decent amount of resource on this system. So we'll go ahead right here and we can see that this model is using around 60 gigs of VRAM to load in. So that is obviously in part due to the quantization that I've decided to use or lack thereof, I suppose could be said. So just keep that in mind when we're actually looking at this. It is now loaded in, so we'll just kind of do as we have been doing. Hey there, little guy. Okay, and we get a result somewhat in between the previous two, which and it is relatively slow. So I think we'll just go ahead now and ask for a Python game. I've asked it for a functional Python game and also said something impressive, being a, that this is the largest current available model in the Granite 4 family. I figure we can go ahead and... Oh, interesting. So treasure hunt. Your goal is to find the hidden treasure on a 5x5 five five grid. You have five attempts to guess the correct location. Interesting. Ooh, interesting. So this is a text only. Well, obviously, because it didn't import anything that would have done graphics, but... Enter the row, 0 to 4, 3, column, 2. 
Ooh, I'm very close. Keep trying. Okay, so it actually gives us hints. But am I close because of the row or the column? Three. Three. Getting warmer. All right, so we're going to stay in column three. I wonder if it's just going to say that, like, regardless of where we go. Oh, it was at 2-1. That actually wasn't too bad. Slap a GUI on this. <laughs> the prompt processing speed. This system's good. It's just, yeah, I feel like it's half-baked. I'm not 100% pleased with the software support. I am referring to the, the Ryzen AI Max. Uh, it's definitely something best for those who like to tinker. All right, here's our graphical user interfa <laughs> interface treasure game. Wow. That is, it did exactly what I asked. Oh, unfortunately it failed to properly implement the hint label. Okay, overall, uh, I suppose it's been too early to make any definitive statements here. Uh, I'll just, we'll see if it'll, how it responds to something perhaps, uh, you know, inappropriate. <laughs> All right, well, it didn't immediately shut it down. I just told it a little story and asked it, uh, get it? Like, because, you know, <laughs> interesting. All right. <laughs> Finally, we'll just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still laughing about the previous response from this. I'm just giving it the Steve's PC repair website prompt. And I figure since I can't really properly show these in like rag settings or like agentic stuff I it's best to just do a comparison of all of the existing ones just to be able to compare the levels of performance in relatively similar prompts so here is the same exact result I will say these models are very okay no this is kind of frustrating so here's the result of the 32 billion parameter MOE granite 4 and here's the result of the 3 billion parameter dense granite 4 <laughs> I mean, all right, this at least had like cleaner buttons. And then here's the 7B MOE. That is quite interesting. We'll just prompt it again for an improved result. So here's our improved version. Okay, I do see an improvement. We have a nice contact form here. There is, that's supposed to be an image carousel, but unfortunately the placeholder images don't really load. Okay, we even have some hover effects on the buttons here. That's acceptable. So that's going to conclude what is a quick look at the Granite 4 family of models. I'm always a fan of the Granite models and really anything open source like this, but I wanted to just go ahead and do some form of testing where we could maybe get a feel, albeit small, for each size of model released here. I'm definitely interested in seeing what comes out in the future for the Granite 4 family. They have mentioned things like thinking models coming as well as a medium size, so maybe even we'll see a large, which would be very cool. Regardless, they're good solid models and they're they're probably best in more business and kind of like bean counter style workflows. Uh, I hope that makes sense in some regard. They do seem to respond well to positive reinforcement. And I will say they were a bit more apt to maybe not role play, but they were willing to more entertain maybe like NSFW stuff more so than I figured they would be. It wasn't just instant shutting down of the conversation. The initial role play response we got from one of the models was also quite odd, but I kind of liked that. And I have read folks saying that these can perhaps be made more entertaining by tweaking the system prompt. So that could definitely be something folks may be interested in checking out. Regardless, that is going to conclude this video and our first look at Granite 4 family of models from IBM. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching. Subscribe.